This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. By signing up to CuriosityStream with the link in the description, you'll also get access to Nebula, where you'll be able to see the rest of the videos in this series before they come to YouTube. Find out more after the video. For many people, myself included, Dark Side of the Moon is the crown jewel in Pink Floyd's catalog. The band started recording it in 1972 when their most iconic lineup was at their most productive. They were pushing boundaries and experimenting, making use of cutting edge technologies at the time, like synthesizers, tape loops, and multi-track recording. And the engineering was done by Alan Parsons, one of the greatest ever to work a studio console. Even the artwork is near perfection, created by the legends at Hypnosis. And on top of all of this, the album is a high-concept lyrical masterpiece that delves into everything that makes up human life. Upon release, Dark Side of the Moon was immediately met with commercial and critical success. It topped Billboard's album chart and stayed there for an incredible 741 weeks. That's 14 years. Taking all this into account, it's no surprise that Dark Side of the Moon is often lauded by fans and critics alike as one of the greatest albums ever recorded. Over the next eight videos, we're going to take a real close look at why that is. We're going to explore the lyricism, musicality, and history of Dark Side of the Moon, and we're going to try to come to a deeper understanding of why it's so magnificent. Welcome to the Dark Side of the Moon Project. Before it all begins, before the beautiful melodies, before the polished solos, before the heart-wrenching lyrics, we open on a single heartbeat. It's a simple touch, but it gets to the humanity that's at the core of Dark Side of the Moon. It provides a universal starting point, and that heartbeat will eventually come full circle in the finale. Out of this heartbeat grows an overture of sorts, foreshadowing the rest of the album. Dark Side of the Moon is, at least in the broadest sense, an album about life. It's about the stresses and struggles that make human existence what it is. It's about all the noise that constantly surrounds us, and about trying to cut through that noise to find truth, beauty, and meaning. And all of these things begin from the same place, from being thrust into the world and greeting it with a heartbeat and a breath. Speak to Me is a birth in the form of a sound collage. It's made of bits and pieces of sound that will appear throughout the rest of the album. There's the ticking clock of time, the cash register of money, Claire Torrey's vocals from The Great Gig in the Sky, the helicopter from On the Run, and the madman's laugh from Brain Damage. In a minute-long swell, Pink Floyd shows us all that is to come. Among this sound collage is a pair of spoken word parts, too. These spoken word parts are members of studio staff and various people in Pink Floyd's entourage. While the band were working on Dark Side of the Moon, Roger Waters recorded interviews with all of these people. He would put them in front of a microphone in a darkened studio and show them flashcards. The questions would start easy, asking about foods and colors, before moving into deeper questions about the subject's lives. Questions like, when was the last time you were violent? followed by, were you in the right? In the, right. the two answers featured on Speak To Me focus on madness, foreshadowing another theme that will drive Dark Side of the Moon. In fact, it's not just present on this album. One of Pink Floyd's biggest fascinations across their entire career was mental illness. A big reason for this is Sid Barrett, a former frontman who experienced serious struggles with mental illness and eventually had to be kicked out of the band. The presence of Sid Barrett is felt throughout Dark Side of the Moon with musings on how modern life can bring about madness. Speak to Me is an overture, a glance into everything that will come in the album, and then it erupts seamlessly into breathe. We emerge from the chaos into a mellow piece, a minute of instrumentals before the lyrics open with a simple command. Breathe. That opening line, Breathe in the Air, had been used by Roger Waters on another song three years earlier, also called Breathe. Waters worked alongside Ron Geeson on that track, which was created for a documentary about human biology called The Body. Breathe in the air. 
Though it opens on the same line, the lyrics and music to Water's song with Geeson are quite different from the Dark Side of the Moon track, and this is because of his bandmates. While Waters wrote all the lyrics for Dark Side of the Moon, the song is brought to life by musical contributions from Richard Wright and David Gilmour. Wright wrote the keyboard piece that provides the basis of the song, inspired partially by Miles Davis' landmark album Kind of Blue. Atop Wright's keyboards, David Gilmour's guitar soars in calming waves. Gilmour used a lap steel guitar to get part of the song's subtle sound, while the other comes from a piece of technology called a Univibe. The Univibe was a foot pedal that created phasing effects for the guitar. Embracing new music technologies was a key part of Dark Side of the Moon, so it's fitting that it should play such an important role in the opening track. The lyrics to Breathe seem to be a parent talking to a child, giving them life, but telling them not to leave. leave, don't leave me. It's an introduction and the story of a person's potential the smiles they'll give, the tears they'll cry. But it comes with a somber reminder. In the end, you are the sum of your experiences. All you touch and all you see is all your life will ever be. This sentiment is something that will be mirrored later on in the album's climax, Eclipse. The second verse of Breathe serves as an exploration of one of the broadest themes of Dark Side of the Moon, modern life. It sings of the way that you'll spend your life toiling, working to try to make it to bed, only to wake up and do it all over again. In the second half of the verse, Gilmore admits that this doesn't have to be the only option though. If you ride the tide, if you follow the safe path, you'll live long and fly high. But not everybody rides the tide. Some prefer to chase after the biggest waves, live on the edge, and go for glory. But as Gilmore sings, this comes at a cost, the risk of ending your life early. Balanced on the biggest wave, race towards another grave. All too many great minds ride that big wave, and when it comes crashing into shore, they burn out along with it. Breathe hints at the glory that can come from breaking from the mold and trying to create beauty to find your own fulfillment. But it also says that this is a risk. It's an introduction that already starts to dive into the difficult choices of modern life. And these discussions will continue to flourish throughout the album. These parallels are part of what makes Dark Side of the Moon so great. Musical, lyrical, and philosophical concepts visited in the first track play out over the course of the next 38 minutes. It's not that Dark Side of the Moon is the only album ever to do this, but I think few have done it with such clarity and cohesion. Every track on Dark Side of the Moon can stand alone as a song, but also feels connected, a tiny, intricate piece in a vast puzzle. And so Speak to Me and Breathe are a fitting opening suite showing us the world that we're about to be violently thrust into as the album continues. This video is the first in a series that's going to look at Dark Side of the Moon track by track. From here on out, I'll be releasing a new video in the series every month, but if you can't wait for that, all of the videos will be coming out early on Nebula. Nebula is a streaming service created by and for independent creators. It gives us a place to create outside of the restraints of YouTube. The first four episodes covering the first side of Dark Side of the Moon are all already up on Nebula, and the rest will be going up the minute I finish them. And even better, you'll get a year of Nebula free if you sign up for CuriosityStream. If you've watched enough of my videos, you probably know the deal with CuriosityStream. They've got thousands of documentaries on all kinds of topics. Personally, I've always been a bit of a space nerd, so I loved watching Hack the Moon, Unsung Heroes of Apollo. And if space isn't your thing, CuriosityStream has thousands of documentaries on science, art, history, and everything in between. So give it a shot now by going to curiositystream.com slash polyphonic. Not only will that give you access to CuriosityStream, but you'll also get access to Nebula, where you can be one of the first to watch the rest of the Dark Side of the Moon project. I would love to do more of these deep dives into albums going forward, and supporting CuriosityStream and Nebula will go a long way to help make that feasible. 
So thanks for watching and thanks for supporting my channel.